Welcome back, everybody, to Ink and Grow Rich, best damn YouTube channel that absolutely nobody's watching. That's a damn shame. My name is Vinny Delay, and today I'm gonna walk you through a Taco Bell commercial that I storyboarded last summer. I don't care. In part one of this episode, we're gonna take a quick look at the scripted treatment and then draw up the initial sketches. Now, shall we begin? All right, so today's job is a fairly straightforward 15 second spot. Taco Bell has a new nachos party pack, and this is the commercial that's gonna announce it to the world. We open on a house party with a group of friends just getting the night started. Some guy walks in carrying this huge Taco Bell box, puts it down on the table, and it opens it up. Everyone in the party marvels at the insane amount of mouthwatering nachos. We we'll then grab a few shots of people eating, cut to a logo, and call it a wrap. Simple enough, well, let's begin sketching. Okay, so after reading the shot list, the first thing I like to do is go online and download some reference photos. Shot one is a wide exterior of the apartment complex. I found this random decent looking photo of an apartment building and dropped that down into place. Shot two is a wide interior of the party. The director sent me this location photo in advance, so I'm just going to go ahead and drop it like it's hot and move on to shot 2B, which is the exact same shot, except somebody is now putting an old vinyl record down in the foreground. With those first three photos dropped down into place, I'm now gonna go over to my toolbar and select my perspective tool. I'm gonna set it to two point general composition. That'll give me a horizon line and two vanishing points, which I can align with the architecture in this photo. And now it's just a simple matter of tracing the building. The perspective tool will align all my pen strokes to the vanishing points while simultaneously allowing for perfect vertical and horizontal lines. I love this tool because to my knowledge, there is no real world equivalent, I mean, other than a ruler, which is super clumsy by comparison. Photoshop doesn't have any native tools which achieve this. However, there is a $30 plugin called Lazy Nazumi, which does all of this and more. So if you are using Photoshop, that's something you might want to look into. Frame two is a wide interior of the party. I'll start by dropping some people into this seating area around this table. Now, this scene is supposed to be taking place at the beginning of the party, so I want to be careful not to overpopulate the shot. And I'm editing a doorway here on the camera left side of frame, even though one doesn't actually exist in the photo. I did that by request of the director because I don't think this is going to be the actual shooting location. I think he sent me this photo to just sort of represent the type of loft he's hoping to find. Okay, so let's add a few more people spread out around this kitchen island on the camera right to breathe some life into the party. And now that I've got the people out of the way, I'll go to work on filling in this background architecture. And finally, I will finish up this frame by grabbing my chisel marker brush and adding a little bit of volume to these people just so they pop off the page a bit. In shot 2B, we've got this turntable in the foreground, so I'm going to select my oval shape tool, disable the fill, check the stroke, and then begin sketching up the turntable. Before we go any further, let's copy that turntable and paste it back into the previous shot as well. Then we'll return to shot 2B to drop this guy's hands dropping the record down. Shot three, we'll start by laying out the island in the foreground and we'll have some guy hanging out here on the camera left. We'll place our door a bit off center towards the right side of frame with our hero entering the party with his huge box of nachos. We'll drop another person on the other side of the island in the middle ground, again, just to reinforce that, that sense of depth. And finally, a third party guest frame right to balance out the composition. For the next shot, we're simply gonna punch in on the same axis. Let's grab that location photo, blow it up a bit, and this hero guy is gonna be standing in the middle ground, dropping this huge box down on the table. All the party guests on the couch are now leaning forward and sort of excited, about like, what's going on here? What's this guy bringing? And again, let's have a pretty even mix of people in the foreground and middle ground. Again, just sort of reinforce that idea of depth. Next, we've got a reaction shot of three of the guests with a little sense of awe on their face. 
Now rather than draw the three people the same size, which for some reason was my initial instinct, I'm going to take the middle person, shrink them down into the background, grab the person on camera left, blow him up a bit, and again, this is going to give us a little bit of a sense of depth. So we've got somebody in the foreground, somebody in the middle ground, and a woman kind of in the background. Dropping back to the previous frame for a moment, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the background, which for some reason I didn't do the first time. And you know what, I'm gonna grab this circular table, and turn it into a rectangular table. And the circular table just, it just looks odd to me. Let's clean up these three characters. They're looking a bit too sketchy to me. Uh, so again, let's reinforce that this is a woman in the background here. Clean up her face a bit and really just sort of sell that they're like, what? There you go. This guy's looking much happier now. And our guy on the left, again, sense of awe and happiness. Like, wow, I can't believe you just made this party so much cooler than it was before. That is page one complete. Moving on to page two. Moving on to page two, the first three frames of this page are going to describe one shot. It's a super wide shot as the camera slowly pulls back, revealing the enormity of the box. The director specifically referenced this opening shot from Star Wars. Ignoring the fact that mentioning Taco Bell and Star Wars in the same breath is an utterly heinous crime against humanity, seriously, I think it even came up in the Nuremberg Trials, we're going to go ahead and draw the pizza box equivalent of that Star Destroyer shot. Except the box is slowly going to be revealed beneath the camera instead of above it so that we can actually see the nachos. Now the keen-eyed observers amongst you may have noticed that I'm actually drawing tacos here instead of nachos. I honestly, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I must have mentally checked out by this point. No worries though, we'll, we'll adjust that when we create the final art. And as you can see, for each of these shots, I'm also adding hands coming in and grabbing food. Moving back to the first frame in this sequence, I'm going to go ahead and draw the background in. Put a little window here and a brick wall. And we're going to copy this background and paste it to the next one, but shrink it down a bit so that the camera has moved forward. And fill in the rest of this brick wall and window. And then, of course, do the same thing with the third shot. Okay, so by now, I imagine you must be getting a pretty good idea of my overall method for drawing storyboards. All of these hands that I drew in the previous three frames are sort of getting lost in the background. So what I'm going to do is grab my chisel marker, as always, and I'm going to draw a contour line around the hands just to make them pop off the page a bit. Shortly after finishing these sketches out, I kind of caught on to the fact that I should have been drawing nachos. So the next thing I'm going to do is go online, find some photos of hands holding nachos, copy them, paste them in place over the hand sketches I already drew, and then just start tracing. The director was kind enough to provide a photo in his treatment for this next shot, which he pretty much just wants me to copy. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and add one extra person in here, just because I feel like it. The last two shots on this page are going to be two close-ups of people eating nachos. I dug around online for a bit, and although I didn't find the exact photo I was hoping for, I did find a few that I could photo bash together to create the action I wanted. And just to fill in this negative space on the camera right, I'll go ahead and add a background guy who was also eating a nacho, but I'll make him soft focus so the attention remains on our hero girl. And for the second eating shot, I found this nifty little photo of former President George W. Bush, who just happens to be posed in the perfect position. So I'll drop his photo down into place, but I'll take the liberty of making him a bit younger. It'd just be weird to have some random old guy at the party. 
And once again, sort of to mirror the previous shot, I'll add a background person here eating a nacho, and I'll go ahead and make that person soft focus as well. And lastly, the director wanted me to drop in a pack shot, and finally a Taco Bell logo, which again, I just pulled off the internet. And that should just about wrap up the initial sketching phase of this job. All right, it's just about gonna wrap things up. Part two of this episode, we'll shoot those initial sketches out to the director, get his feedback, and then draw up the final ones. And as always, if you found this video insightful or entertaining, I'd like to see more of them in the future, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is Vinny Delay with Angry Rage.